um, Mr. Andrew Bucknell and Dr. Gavin O'Neill for doing the bulk of the operating in this particular series, and Mr. Desiger and Mr. John Clifford for starting this uh, process at Royal Melbourne in 2005. Uh, we have no declarations of interest. I'd like to talk about 99 consecutive patients, I'm sorry about the title, that had uh, navigated percutaneous screw fixation of their pelvis for fracture between 2005 and about July 2011. Uh, we believe that the use of computer navigation to place uh, percutaneous screws is a very safe, reproducible uh, procedure that um, accurately allows the, the screws to be placed with a minimum of uh, complications. It's not still an easy procedure. You still need an excellent knowledge of the pelvic anatomy, especially radiographically, so that you can accurately get your planning images because the, uh, it's the, the crux of the whole circumstance is you need good uh, planning images. Uh, this has been presented in one form before at AOA and we're looking at purely the, the screw tip distance from the intended path, but we've now expanded this data set to include the angle of the screw path compared to where we planned and also we're starting to now look at the outcomes data using the Victorian Orthopaedic Trauma Outcomes Registry to, to monitor our patients into the future and then we plan to compare that to other forms of fixation. So I'll just quickly demonstrate how this procedure is done. Uh, with the patient supine square draped, we place a single iliac pin on the contralateral side to where we'd like to fix, and that's an anchoring point for our pelvic array. Uh, using the navigation machine, like any other procedure, we'll then register fluoroscopic images onto the computer, which we can then plan from. The, the IIs that we used at Royal Melbourne had a divergent beam. This is a device called the X-Spot that uh, is used to try and compensate for that and give us an accurate uh, image two-dimensionally. Once you've got your registered images, you can plan your screw in the three planes that you want to look at at once, you have inlet, outlet and lateral view. And as long as your images are accurate, then you can plan them safely. Uh, the graphic in the bottom right hand corner is the, the graphic you'll see as you're passing the screw or guide wire. That's possible by using a drill that has an array on it as well, much like you would when aligning cuts and total knees. Passing the wire, it's a very narrow safe corridor and using the drill you can in real time visualise where you're placing that screw in the three planes that you want to see at once without having to constantly screen change the position of your eye. We then place the screw using the, uh, the navigating device, re-register the images and compare the screw compared to the plan that we'd made all through a one centimetre cut. All Pelvises post-operatively had a CT scan to ensure that the screw path was through the safe corridor and wasn't causing any neurological uh, complications. And we'd take the images from the brain lab uh, computer and uh, place them into a DICOM viewer, we use the Cyrex, to accurately measure the distance from the screw path, the angle of the path in the shot that we had with the greatest divergence of the screw. So all up from our 99 patients, we had 157 screws. And you can see we had a uh, by factor of about two to one uh, sacroiliac screws as opposed to anterior column and supraacetabular screws into the posterior column. Uh, the accuracy that you see, the sacroiliac screws, the mean tip distance is 3.2 mils, which is less than half the diameter of the screw with a mean path distance of 1.1 millimetres. Very accurate in a very dangerous area. Our accuracy, unfortunately, is a little bit higher in the anterior column and again in the supracetabular screws. And we think that's because the uh, images used for planning are much harder to, account to, uh, to get reproducibly. If you're just getting an AP inlet and outlet, it's quite easy. You're only moving the II in one plane. But to get to an inlet, uh, iliac inlet and obturator outlet, it's quite difficult to move the II and reproduce those images. Also, when you're putting an anterior column screw or a posterior column screw, you don't tend to close down the pelvis, which moves the reference array. And so the, although these screws are still safe, the image that you get will unfortunately be slightly different to where the original plan was. And just if I plot the uh, sacroiliac screws on a scatter graph, uh, you can see that there are a few outliers, but on the whole, the screw tip accuracy is very good. And we actually got a little bit better over time in both uh, de the degrees different in the path and the, the screw tip accuracy. We feel that's because we are getting better at acquiring appropriate planning images. And that's what's uh, allowing it to happen. I'd like to talk a little bit about the outcomes now for where we're happening uh, with our data. Using the Victorian Orthopaedic Trauma Outcomes Registry, we've managed to get data for 92 of those patients. And we have uh, 
just uh, done a bit of uh, background research on these people. Uh, as you'd expected, there's greater number of males and females, about two to one. The average age, or the me median age, sorry, was 35, with a range of 16 to 67. So it's, um, as you'd expect, skewed towards the younger population. Uh, more than half, as you can see from the mechanism, were from high energy motor vehicle accidents, as you'd expect. And consequently, compens compensability, most of these were TAC funded. As, again, as you'd expect, associated injuries, um, lower limb and chest injuries. The chest injuries include rib fractures and lung contusions, uh, followed again by then lumbar spine injuries, as you'd expect, upper limb fractures and abdominal injuries. Most people, of course, went to rehab, uh, median stay in 17 and median ICU stay too, although quite a number didn't have to go to ICU at all. This is where it starts to get um, interesting for us, is what happens to our patients down the track. And at six months, this is a graph of showing what's happening to people. Out of the data that we've collected for people at the six month, 83% of them were home, 53% were home without any assistance, and there were still five in rehab. I'm sorry, that figure 83 is incorrect, it should be 93. Uh, and the accommodation status at 12 months, you can see that most people are home, but again, there's a, and most people are now no longer needing assistance, but there's still a skew of about 5% who are people who require ongoing care in a, um, a hostel or rehab environment and other serious injuries. Also, uh, this I think demonstrates a little bit of the, uh, the limitations of VOTOR. At six months, you can see of the people we collected data for, 73% were working prior to the accident, gives you an idea of socioeconomic status. 44% were working post, and most of them were in the same jobs that they were. But at 12 months, 100% of the people who we contacted were working prior to the accident or who were able to be questioned about this. So I think that says a little bit, unfortunately, about the way we can follow up through VOTOR. Again, uh, that's the same similar sort of numbers of, of them, 71% 71, 71 are working. However, most of them have changed jobs at that point, only half are in their original occupation. So lastly, from this work, we'd like to show the, uh, the um, short form 12 scores for physical and mental disability. And you can see that most people do improve over the course of 12 months, as you'd expect after an accident. But what we found really interesting was people's mental state. The, uh, at 12 months, it was higher than average. We thought that was really uh, quite interesting. Where we're taking this data set from here now is to correlate uh, individual patients with their associated injuries and then demonstrate that our technique of using uh, computer navigation to place sacroiliac screws in comparison to other methods gives you equal or better outcomes with a much uh, less surgical morbidity associated. 